Hi everyone and welcome to episode number 14 of our Configmas 2022. My name is Johan and in this demo you will learn how to create an MDT offline media. Demo time. The scenario is the following. You have a remote location that's behind a pretty weak WAN link and you need to deploy a bunch of machines. Since MDT on its own doesn't support peer-to-peer, -peer, you would basically have to extend it with the PowerShell deployment kit, you can generate an offline media instead. This is how we do that. If I go over to one of my MDT servers that I have, this is a production deployment chair. I have a few applications, Adobe, Office, I still call it Office, it's Microsoft Apps these days, or 365 Apps. I have a bunch of images in this environment that I've added. I have a bunch of drivers for different hardware. I have a good few number of sequences that I'm using, but I want to create the media so I can do a deployment pretty much offline. Now, when you create the media, by default, it's going to use everything you have in your environment, entire deployment share. And in my environment, that's going to be a pretty big media. So we're going to create a filter a selection profile to reduce what we put in the media. So first of all, I'm going to create a few folders here that I'm going to use for my filter. So in my operating system node, I'm going to create a folder Win10 Media. And I'm going to take one of my images that I want to use this one here and copy to that folder. When you're copying things in MDT, it doesn't do a full duplicate. It's just a link to the original uh, media. I'm good with the drivers for now, but I'm going to do the same thing for my sequences. I'm going to create a folder, Win10 Media. I'm going to take one of my MDT sequences, this one here, and copy to that folder as well. Now I can go ahead and create a filter. Selection profile, Win10 Media, it's a good name as any. I'm going to select the application folders I want to include in the media, so I'm going to pick my Adobe and Microsoft. I'm going to go to my operating systems and I'm going to include the uh, Win10 Media folder there. In my drivers folder, I'm going to include the Windows 10 folder. You can add in this folder as well just to have it. And in my sequences folder, I'm going to pick this one here and I'm done with my filter. So I have selected what I need, I have a filter ready. Now I can go ahead and create the media. The trick when creating a media is to make absolutely sure you don't create it inside of your deployment share because that will break things. Create it somewhere else. So in my example here, I'm gonna create a Win10 media folder and I'm gonna store it there. This is outside of my production share, which is over here. So Create new media. I'm going to specify that folder that I created. If I can type, I will do it. And I'm going to pick the profile that I created. My Win10 media profile. Hit next, next. And I have my media. Now, a media has its own rules and configurations different from your production deployment chair. So if I open this one here, for example, I can clear the use of using a 32-bit boot image. I don't need those. In the rules, this is my custom settings in the file. This is my bootstrap in the file. I'm going to replace them with some other settings. But first, I'm going to configure the boot image. So for my 64-bit boot image, I'm going to pick a different background image. And in drivers and patches, I'm going to pick my WinP profile, 
and include everything from that profile. This is a really good way to making sure you only add the drivers that you want to the boot image. And hit OK on this one. Now, in this sample folder here, and I put a link here below the video where you can download these examples, but I have a bootstrap in a file that is good for media, and I have a custom init file that is good for media. So I'm going to copy those over and uh, replace the existing ones. So if I go to my W10 media folder, content, deploy, control, paste in, and here we go. I'm going to review that um, in a file. So I'm going to close this one here. Go to my Windows 10 Media and just show you what I have configured here. So for a start, I'm setting a different computer name than the default. I'm using a user exit script to basically name this PC based on its MAC address. I could also have used the serial number if I wanted to, but Hyper-V VMs, they have a pretty long serial number and it's not ideal to use that as a computer name. I'll give you an example. If I go over here and run this little PowerShell snippet, it will tell me the serial number of one of my VMs that I have. And as you can see, this is not the ideal computer name. And even if you use functions to, to shorten it to make a good name, you still really can't guarantee that it's unique. You're more likely to have a unique name if you base it on a MAC address or if you have a physical device and you base it on their serial number. But anyhow, I have a little script that does that. I can show you that script. I have it here in my production deployment share. It's called set name. A very simple script. Gets the MAC address, puts PC as a prefix in front of it, and replaces the uh, columns in the MAC address. I have also configured this one to provide a KMS key for Windows 10 Enterprise. I have um, configured it to use a sequence or pre-select the sequence. I have configured it to pre-select a few applications and I have configured it to uh, skip most of the wizard panes in MDT. Since this is an offline media, I'm going to go ahead and remove this one here. I don't really need it and save the file. Now, the next step is to update that media. So I'm going to right click and hit update. And the media has been created. I sure wish it was this quick in the real world. I did take the opportunity to cut away the weight here in the video. It does take a good few minutes to generate a big media. I'm going to click finish here. And I'm going to take a look in that folder. Not this one, but this one here. I do have my ISO file that was created, 16 gigs in size, almost out of those 16 gigs. About three is the application. Four is the OS image. And about eight gigs are the drivers. And I can now copy that media over to one of my Hyper-V hosts. Go back to that folder. Grab the media. I'm going to copy it over here. I'm going to replace the test I did earlier. File is copied. And now I can go over to that host and create a virtual machine. I have prepared a PowerShell script. And once again, these scripts are shared in the link below. This PowerShell script creates virtual machine in this location. It's using that media that I copied. It's going to use this particular network, name the virtual machine MDT Media 001. It will give it two CPUs. It will give it four gigs of memory and a hard drive. If I would do this on a Hyper-V machine on or a Hyper-V host on Windows 10 or Windows 11, I automatically disable the automatic checkpoints because I, I'm not the biggest fan, put it that way. 
And then I will start up that virtual machine and connect to it using VM Connect. So I'm going to head and run this script. Boot from the ISO. See my background that I customized or added. The sequence was pre-selected due to the settings in my inner file. Same goes with the computer name generated out of the MAC address of this virtual machine. Time zone was configured. And these were the pre-selected applications that I had in my inner file as well. And I'm going to hit next and start the deployment. From now on, it's fully automated. And after 10, 12 minutes, give or take, I have a machine up with Windows 10 22H2 and Office and Adobe installed. This is everything you need to do in MDT to create an offline media, for example, to be used in a remote location for imaging without putting a load on the network. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.